Hey, this is Ernesto, and today we're taking a look at one of my favorite vocal contact libraries. It's Exhale from Output. Exhale is a ridiculously versatile VST. I honestly don't know why I haven't talked about this sooner. To make this plugin as digestible as possible, I'm gonna break this video up according to its three main components, which is notes, loops, and slices. Let's first start with notes mode. Notes mode is the most straightforward way to use Exhale. You can pretty much just get up to two layers of vocals and play it like you would any instrument uh, with your MIDI controller. On the main panel here, we have these macros that I'll get back into, but I wanna say a quick word about the preset menu down below. You're certainly smart enough to figure out how to use a preset filter, so I wanna just encourage you to use the filter because this is gonna save you a ton of time. As I was writing this loop, these preset tags came in real handy. I didn't wanna audition hundreds, there's 559 different presets in here. I don't wanna audition every single one of them, so instead I filtered them down, I was left with a handful of them. I wanted something that was uh, dirty. I wanted something that was a bit airy, uh, something more pad-like and uh, was a part of a loop. And these were my results. So the 559 became just 25 to check out. So as I browsed through them, I was able to really just like hone in on a preset based off of these tags. And the one I landed on that I really liked is this one here called Ez Riverall. And when I came across this preset, I knew I had to use it. I really fell in love with it, but I want to see what I can do with it still. So then I looked through the macro sliders to see if it can become a sound that I was more into. I find that there's usually one or two macros here that have a really big impact on the sound. In my case, that was the pulse knob. See, it's that big old pulse. I didn't want it, so, you know, get rid of it. Sweet. I also find that there's usually like a macro or two where I have no idea what's being modulated. It's just like a word that says pulse and like, okay, well, what, what does that you know mean exactly? So to find out what a macro is doing, just click the macros button up here and you'll see what a macro is assigned to. So pulse was what, the second one? So click this little number here. And so pulse and here are all the parameters that pulse is adjusting. But let's say you wanna assign a macro slider to a different parameter. Uh, for example, this reverb, uh, let's see what it's adjusting. Yep, it's just messing with uh, the wet knob on the reverb. But let's say I want to do more with it. So I would click Assign now, and then I just gotta hover over any parameter pretty much, and it will uh, assign it to Macro 4. So I want Macro 4 not only to affect the reverb, but also to add in some wetness from the chorus. So now that I clicked Assign, I'm gonna go back to Edit, and then just kind of dial in how much of that depth and range. All right, cool, so I dial it in. So now that Macro 4 controls the wetness of the reverb and the chorus, I wanted to add in some uh, automation to my track. So I uh, wrote some in here, just how it looks, and now let's hear how it sounds soloed. Great, I think it sounds like it's like breathing more, like there's more uh, dynamic liveliness to it. Let's hear it in context. Sweet. If you want to dive deeper into your preset, just click the engine tab here, and there you'll find all the ways that you can tweak and craft your sound. As we go through the video, I'm going to talk through each of these panels, uh, but for now, let's just focus on the source panel here. The source panel is where you set the sound source for each layer. I was a little overwhelmed by it at first because there's a whole lot going on here, but it all makes sense, I promise. So what I'm first going to do is click these waveforms and it'll help us see kind of these little icons here. Click one of them, and this will give you access to all, like pretty much like the sound library inside of Exhale. So now you can pretty much decide between using a one shot, uh, a pad, or what they call tape one and two, which are kind of like long samples. So this preset it just uses airy layers right here. I'm just gonna click okay on that. Whatever sound you select, you can further shape it by uh, affecting the volume, the pan, the tune. There's a reverse button here, which is great. And if you click this waveform, it allows you to set the start and end points of that sample. You also have an EQ, you have an ADSR, and these you know, will help shape the tone and dynamic of those layers. And inside this little advanced menu here, you can uh, add in a glide, which is be really, really cool sometimes, or make it monophonic. If you're a beginner, I wouldn't worry getting into the weeds too much. Just know that these advanced controls are here in case you need to use them. 
But if you stick with the presets, you'll be off to a really, really good start. And before I keep going, if what you're learning is getting you really excited about Excel, please support the channel by liking this video. Loops mode is one of the more unique and creative features inside of Exhale. In this mode, Exhale curates a set of vocal chops and loops and assigns them all across your MIDI keyboard. So all you have to do is select a preset like I did right here. And this is really important. Click this little uh, note button and select uh, the key that you're, what you're playing in. So I'm playing in D major. And then you can play around with it. And after playing around with it, I just really like the, these notes going back and forth. Really simple. I thought that sounded great. And hear how it sounds in context. Yeah, really simple stuff, but it just completes it. It's pretty great. So let's take a look at the source panel because it's a bit different than what we saw in notes mode. You'll see that instead of like a little face here, we have this waveform. If you click it, you get to uh, see a couple pages with different uh, loops and phrases in here. So for example, let's say I click breakdown. So now it sounds like this. Or like solo chorus. So I'm gonna go back to Pentatastic and uh, just stick with that there. And so looking at the source panel, there are some controls here that I find really, really helpful, like the form and shift, like just listen to the impact of it. Yeah, I love messing with that thing. And then you also have the speed that I think is really, really helpful too. Yeah, I love these controls a whole lot. There's also the EQ, you still have that. You still have the ADSR that you can mess with. And then you have the panel on the right here that can change controls for each individual loop. I'm often messing with the tune setting here. If I want to go an octave above or below, you can also choose to reverse the sample. So now let's talk about the rhythm panel. The rhythm panel can be used across all modes, whether it's notes, loops, or slice mode. It's really powerful and it's great for giving your sounds movement and rhythm. I think this panel is really important. You don't have to be a master at it, but you should definitely know what's happening in here so you know how to shape each preset to your liking. One thing that's really easy to miss is what the rhythm panel can modulate in the first place. You see this top row of effects here from volume all the way to saturate. This is what rhythm can modulate. It can't do anything to these bottom effects right here, only the top ones. Another thing that's really easy to miss is that it's how to add modulation from rhythm to one of these effects. All you have to do is just click one of these and drag up or down, and that will determine the depth of that modulation. Besides that, the rest of the rhythm section is what you expect to see. You either have an LFO waveform, and just like if you click this pattern button, you can select a bunch of different waveform patterns there, which is cool. There's also a step sequence here where you can draw it in yourself, or once again, click pattern and choose from a bank of patterns there. And then you have your rate knob, which you can click this button here to set the rate, or you can click and drag this knob to determine where that rate is. So let's see, let's, let's add some of this rhythm modulation, and then uh, let's add in some of the saturation. Let's hear how it sounds now. Yeah, just some like subtle movement. And I think that just makes it a little more interesting. I like that. There's one last thing I want to talk about in the rhythm panel is this flux section right here. Flux, this adds modulation to the right knob. So I'm going to turn it on, then I'm going to click edit, and you have this menu inside of a menu, which is not my favorite thing, but you know, here it is. In this menu, you have a step sequence here that's going to be affecting the right knob. What I like to do typically is let's go to eight, and I like to click randomize and just kind of get a random wave shape. Flux rate is how, you know, the rate of the step sequence here. So let's do an eighth. Let's get a little crazy there. And then the mount knob, as I drag it up, that's gonna affect the depth that will have the effect on the rate knob. So we'll go to like 50%. And let's hear how it sounds. Let's go even more. If you wanna learn more or buy Excel, then be sure to click my affiliate link down below. This plugin is one of my absolute favorites, so I hope that you uh, go ahead and check it out. All right, let's finish up this video by talking about slices mode. Slice mode is similar to loop mode. While loops focuses more on individual loops per MIDI key, slice, what it's doing is almost taking like one long loop and then it splits it up into little slices and assigns it to each uh, key. So I found this preset I like called Nice Fem Hum, and this is what it sounds like. See how each key is like, like a one shot. Really, really, really short burst of sound right there. And after some experimentation, this is where I ended up. I hope you're noticing how I'm using loops and slices in this example. I used to go really overboard with Excel. 
Uh, since I really like the loops and slices, I want to use all of them all at once. But I find that just sprinkling in exhales, uh, samples and the loops, that's that's really all you need to do to, to make it really stand out and to make it something that's super catchy for the listener. So let's dive a little deeper into slices and take a quick look at the source panel here. The source panel on slices is nearly identical to the loop source panel. You can click this waveform here to browse other slices, um, just like in loops mode, I'll click cancel there. You also have, you know, your EQ, your ADSR going on, your form is shifting, your speed, all like exactly the same as the loops panel. But you know what, let's finally talk about the effects panel right down here. The effects panel, it has these two rows of effects. Remember how the top row, this is what can be assigned to the rhythm modulation here, but this bottom row can't. But there's some really cool effects that I wanna talk about. So one effect that I really like is the pitch effect here. There's a flutter section and a pitch envelope section. So the flutter is kind of like that wow and flutter is added in that uh, pitch warbliness. So kind of crank it pretty high. <laughs> Yeah, quite a lot. So let me bring it back down a bit. And the pitch envelope will like adjust the pitch according to the mount knob here and uh, it'll follow this ADSR curve. So this is how, let me bring up the attack a bit. See how it pitched it up a whole octave? Yeah, it's fun, cool stuff you can mess around with there. And lastly, we have this reverb panel. I just wanted to bring it up because there are a lot of different reverbs that you can play around with. So be sure to check that out. Let me see if I can give it like super big, like huge haul. Yeah, I like the reverbs a whole lot in this plugin. So be sure to check that out. And that's how to use Exhale for beginners. If you're enjoying what you're learning, please like and subscribe. It'll help other music makers find this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Later.